Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be checking out the Raz Pi 3 from Sun Founder. So let's get started. Now I do want to thank Sun Founder for sending this over to me for review and everything we talk about in this video will be linked down in the description below. Now I do have a few opinions about this guy, but let's talk about the specs first before we jump into that. To begin, we have a 10.1 inch IPS screen at a resolution of 1280 by 800. It's also a 10 point touchscreen panel, glass in construction, but plastic on the shell. Now, as far as the connectivity wise, you have an ethernet port, three USBs, full size HDMI, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and then a 5.5 millimeter barrel jack. On the opposite side, you have your SD card, power button, and then your volume buttons, and also a battery indicator. Now up on the top of this, or at the front of it, you could say, you have a slot for the GPIO wires, and then underneath there's also a little slot for the CSI cable. Now as far as the inside goes, it's pretty straightforward to install this guy. You have your Raspberry Pi, USB-C power, two HDMI cords, and then a USB 3.0 to plug to their daughter board, as well as the ethernet cable to plug into that daughter board. And then a little shim that actually has auto rotation built in and the micro sd card goes on the opposite side it does come with a screwdriver so you could disassemble this and install your raspberry pi in here and no it does not come pre-shipped with the raspberry pi now as far as the operating system goes they are using their own custom operating system based on top of raspberry pi os and it is using lxte so you're going to be very familiar with a lot of the apps and the placements of everything just like raspberry pi would but one thing they did change was the big menu now once you press it, it comes up to be like a tablet menu where it's easier to select programs and find what you need. It also does have an on-screen keyboard and operates just like a Raspberry Pi desktop. It does have a custom software in there that also allows for auto rotation. That's that little shim that we installed on the Raspberry Pi. Otherwise, everything seems to be very clean on the desktop and you won't find much difference between this and regular Raspberry Pi OS. Now, as far as the structure on this guy, there's actually three ways to put it up. You could actually hold it like a tablet vertically. You could uh, put it down on a desk flat, or you could stand it up like the way I have it right now, where it's vertical. It does have enough space for it, so it won't just tip over. Now, I've been using this for about the past four or five days, just exclusively to see how this guy works. And here are my findings about it. Now, just using the Raspberry Pi going into browsers, normally like you would on a Raspberry Pi, works just like it would. I didn't have any uh, lag issues. I didn't have any thermal problems. Everything worked out pretty well. The speakers are decent and the brightness is very eligible. This whole thing runs off three 18650 batteries and you should have about five hours of battery life, which I find is great because having a tablet that is actually portable, like this whole thing right now is not on any wires and I'm actually able to use a full Raspberry Pi OS. Now they say it's five hour battery time, but honestly, I only got about four hours of use and it's on medium light, no medium uh, brightness. Now I find one of these guys to be really good if you're gonna be using this as a portable retro emulation or actually using it as a little monitoring tool for your Octoprint or something like that. This is a great little tablet for that, especially the retro Pi thing because you have a full monitor stand, USB ports to plug in a couple of controllers, battery power operated. This is uh, amazing for that. So here's my, some of my thoughts about it as far as what it can be improved probably on the next version. One thing is when you open this up, you're gonna notice they're only using one USB 3 port, which they could kind of just use the second USB 3 port for a SSD, some sort of connection. It does have room in here for an SSD and the operating system would run so much better on an SSD over the SD card. You do also have two optional USB 2s that are kind of like free and open. Probably could have used those as well for different sensors or maybe a webcam because this probably could have done really well with the webcam and a mic. Another thing is uh, their fan is a little bit loud. So I don't know if you can hear it or pick it up. Right now it's running and the fan is, you know, you hear this buzzing noise. That, that's the fan from this guy. So I might want to disconnect it, but I'm afraid of the thermal throttling from this. So I just leave it on. If you put it against the table, it's even louder because it's kind of like forcing the air to come in. Now, one thing I do wish that they have installed on this was a battery meter inside the operating system itself. There is a battery meter on the side. It tells you the LEDs and everything, how much battery you have. But honestly, uh, I would rather prefer it to be inside the operating system. This way I have some sort of power control. And if it's like, say, running low on battery or something like that, it could shut itself down. And I've seen other boards do this, like the 
Pi Juice has some sort of features like this as well. Ultimately, this is not a bad project display. I actually will be using this for a few projects just because I need the touchscreen and I actually like the compactivity. I don't know if that's a word, but how compact it is and also it's battery operated so I could test this around certain things without having to bring a power cord or anything like that. So I will be using this. Personally, I see myself using it. That's that's the thing. The only downside is what, a couple of things I mentioned about the SSDs and all that other stuff in the fan. So in the future, I wish they would add those implementations that I just spoke about and this will be an ultimate beast, especially if you get some sort of webcam on here and you're able to do some live video chats or something like that where having it stand up like this is actually very functional if you have a webcam on. Just like this alone might even work very well as one of those uh, magic mirrors or smart mirrors. You know, you have your screen, you have your touch screen if you want to change some stuff, shows your calendar. And then if you have to video chat or something, you also have the webcam, but uh, obviously not on this one. But yeah, that's, that's my thoughts about this. I see where the direction is at. I understand it. Personally, I will be using this myself. I actually enjoy using something like this because I could use so many things with it. Either I'm uh, system monitoring, I could be doing something with Octoprint and just pull it up on the screen and carry it around. I could even use this as a second monitor for my desktop if I needed one on a, on a crunch. So with its own battery operated power and the Raspberry Pi, I, I literally see myself using it. But again, it's not for everyone. Uh, you, might got, you guys might have different ideas about it. Those are my thoughts. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed this review, please hit that like button. Let me know what you guys would do with it if you had something like this. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.